has it, and if you want to develop it, you can, kind of thing. I was always amazed they paid me for talking, and I went to the most amazing places. Betsy has always been a very active, creative type personality, and she got into, strangely enough, you might think, designing house coats. If you have to go to the market, I mean, today everybody puts their blue jeans on, but in those days, you put on a little house coat and, you know, zip it up and go to the market or whatever you had to do. And I, so I did them in short and long. My living room that you've seen in here has all the bamboo. I did it designed for that. And, and I enjoyed it, I had, I had fun doing it. But then blue jeans came in and that became the style. Mrs. Bloomingdale uh, participated in many charity events and there was one particular that, that she's always remembered because uh, it was with her friend Nan Kempner who was a very famous New York socialite. Nan and I were doing a charity show and to get the girls to model, Nan, myself, and quite a few others, uh, they gave us the dress that we picked out. Well, I hated my dress, and Nan hated her dress. So we exchanged, and we found out that we loved our dress. The dress that I, she wore was great for me, and vice versa. The two of us were so happy to get each other's dresses after the show. When uh, Ronald Reagan was inaugurated president in 1981, uh, Mrs. Bloomingdale and uh, Alfred Bloomingdale went to the inauguration ceremonies and to the balls afterward. I wore the blue satin of Mark Bowen with the jacket that was quilted. It was cold, of course, at that time. Velvet and quilted uh, of matching blue. And I could wear the jacket with a short dress or a skirt or something but it was really made to go over the long blue strapless dress. Strapless, I don't wear anymore, but, yeah. <laughs> but it was pretty. Mrs. Bloomingdale has been very good friends with Nancy Reagan for decades now. What's really funny is that there were a number of instances where Mrs. Reagan and Mrs. Bloomingdale actually dressed similarly. Uh, the Royal Wedding in 1981, where Mrs. Bloomingdale commissioned a peach-colored Marc Bowen for Dior Couture ensemble with a beautiful green suede belt and a very large straw hat. Her dress was Jimmy Galanos, and my dress was Marc Bowen. And it happened to be the same color, but we didn't really, we didn't check with each other because Jimmy was doing hers and Mark was doing mine. It really shows the, the kind of charming tie that they have with each other, that they might end up going to the same event uh, dressed very similarly, even though they had not planned to do so. We did a special evening dress for the ball at Buckingham Palace the night before the wedding. And it was a beautiful, really marvelous dress. And Mrs. Bloomingdale wore a, a, a tiara, you know, a diadem. And some particular lady would rather disagreeable say, why did she wear that? It was ridiculous. The tiara belonged to Mrs. Bloomingdale's mother, who was an English woman. So, I don't see why did she have to criticize it, so I was very put up, and she was totally wrong about that. She told me, she said that Princess Diana came and told her, she said, you have the best dress in the, in the room. And, uh, and I must say, Mr. Bloomingdale was a great fan too, because he has the greatest taste, you know? And he always okay everything that she wore. And I was very fond of him, he was a, a great friend. Unfortunately, though, her, her husband, Alfred Bloomingdale, was not very well at that time. He had been diagnosed with cancer, and it was only a very few months later that he passed away. I remember that um, Alfred and I gave a lunch. I've forgotten where it was now. Princess Grace came, and 
I have the note that she sent me as a thank you for that lovely time, uh, for the lovely, and I came across it the other day too, but because I, I keep a box of letters that the children, I don't know the children would want, but whatever. But the most amazing one was that I was sitting at my desk upstairs, at my, I was one side, Lisa was the other side, and the mail came in, and it was a note from Princess Grace who had just died that weekend in that car accident. And she was sending me a sympathy note for Alfred's death. So. the last dress that I bought in Couture, which was John Franco Ferre, just before Bernard Arnault bought or took over Christian Dior and brought in the current designer. And uh, that, that dress I, was the last dress. It's a very beautiful piece. And she remembers it kind of in a bittersweet way because her lifestyle had been changing and she no longer was uh, needed to attend various functions I, I, in, in haute couture clothes. So she stopped buying at the haute couture. Actually, my granddaughters are always interested in the clothes too because it's a, such a generation away that, that they're now very interested in it. She gave me this Adolfo sweater that was navy and I was allowed to wear navy sweaters to, with the uniform and I wore it to school but it had um, kind of a white gardenia on it and piping and it did not go with the uniform code <laughs> and then someone said, I didn't even know what Adolfo was but yeah. I, I, mean, I had the tag in the back and someone said, you can't wear that and I said, it's Adolfo and they were like, oh. You knew it was special. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have a grandmother whose clothes that not I covet to wear which I don't think anybody else does which I think still holds true. I don't think there are many people who see their grandmother in something and think, oh, I wish that I had that to wear. Mm -hmm. The couture today is very different and is not really a lifestyle for most people. She fondly remembers the haute couture, but it was something that no longer n was needed in her life. And so she simply said goodbye to it when it was time. I thought the exhibit was remarkable. What a privilege to have all that stuff made for you. She looked amazing wearing them then, and I think if she were to wear some of those exact same outfits today, she would also look amazing. Well, I'm, I know a lot of those dresses. I've, I've seen her in them. That one dress with all those little buttons down the back, I said, how many days did it take her to get into that little number? You can tell what the time period is with some of them. Immediately you can look and say, okay, I know she wore that in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. And you look at the date and see it. Mm -hmm. To be giving this retrospective to people today who have no um, access to it, I think it's phenomenal. Superb. It's very elegant tonight. Now we know why this school is here, yeah. to bring this back and more. She just kept smiling, actually. Well, she, was... she read every single text panel. She wanted to see all of the videos, and she was in awe because it is yes. so beautiful. And she said that the students here at FIDM will actually understand what she got to go through in the couture, which was really kind of the biggest compliment that she could have given to us because as an educational institution, we wanted to bring that world to our students and to our visitors. And it's something that we knew was really important because it's a world that is fading away uh, and we had the people here that we wanted to document them. We felt that that was really, really important and so now was the time to do it. Mrs. Bloomingdale lived that period and this will come alive to the students. They can actually see what differentiates a couture garment from an average ready-to-wear garment. These pieces are very special. They are all done by couture designers who will go down in history as being the most famous of the 20th century.
all of it, all of it. All of it was a special world and a special time. Uh, but it used to be fun, and I used to have a good time doing it, and friends and all that, so it's all part of the aura that it was. But it's not was not that for me anymore. It's a different kind of, different clientele, and different world, and different everything. And, and I think those days, if you could have these beautiful clothes made, it was a wonderful thing. And I was very lucky. <laughs>